How did you join Maple Worth Martyrs? Oh, this is great. We, um, you know, we have history. Myself, John Lutz, Paul Appel, we all have history from SNL. I think a lot of things precede uh, work, you see. Uh, I was there from 04, 05, and 06 as a writer, uh, as well was John and Paula was there. We actually did some scenes together, myself and Paula. This is all easy stuff. I mean, you create a friendship with people. They end up producing and writing something amazing. They think about you. And uh, it's just all history. You know, I, I go by the thing of uh, the notion of you you got to plant these little seeds uh, throughout your life. And I think your, your seeds end up blossoming. You get a chance to work continuously as opposed to waiting long periods of time between projects. I think... Uh, that, that's the fun thing about, you know, showing up on time, staying late. All those little metaphors we use in our regular lives and regular jobs, I think it still applies to being an actor. You know, you build a relationship, you have a great work ethic, and it goes from there. And when they called me about it, you know, they wrote the character, especially with me and mine. So I get a chance to take that and what they wrote. I get a chance to uh, make the character my own and have fun with it. And um, this was a no brainer. I think as an actor nowadays, you probably turn down just as many things as you end up uh, coming on board for. So for me, this one made sense. It was just a fun character to play. And, and I get a chance to work alongside John, John Lutz. So it, it made good sense. <laughs> That's a fantastic, thank you. Could you please describe your character, Chief Billy Bills? Oh, this guy, he's a, you know, he, he's, a, he's an authority figure. And I think because he's been doing this so long, he has his own method, his own way of, of tackling these, these murders. And, and this is something new for Chief Bills. It, it, normally there's not a lot of murders going on in this small town. And I think he's kind of he's on his heels a little bit. There's too many things happening around here. Got this little lady out here who writes these damn books, who, who's out here helping solve these murders. Meanwhile, me being a chief of police, and I got Officer Pulse here, played by John Lutz, we got a job to do. And our job is to solve these murders. You know, these, and these murders are back to back. There's too, much, there's too much going on. We're almost overwhelmed here. This is a small town. We got a handle on this. But uh, somehow we, we're being overwhelmed here by murders, and we got to figure out where all these murders are coming from. So playing Chief Bills, uh, he has a, he has a, he, he garners a certain level of respect from people. His authority is unquestionable. He wants to make sure that uh, this little lady doesn't, doesn't step on his toes. It's his job to solve these murders and he's gonna solve them. And he don't need someone who's not a, in, in law enforcement stepping on his toes. So I like I like the character, the balance of him. Now he is a little clueless. He, now I cannot lie, this man is clueless. He's a little clueless, <laughs> which I think is a fun balance to play. Someone who's clueless, who also wants to be in, 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 in authority, who also wants to be respected and all those good things that come along with being in law enforcement. So he respects the badge, but no one else does. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> and there are some amazing guest stars in the show, including Maya Rudolph, Tim Meadows. We could keep on going. How oh, is yeah. collaborating with all the different guests? This is great because... I got a chance to, most of the people who are, are casted on the show, I've worked with before, which is fabulous. You know, I get a chance to uh, to revisit, of course, Tina Fey. She's also a guest on it. I worked with Tina Fey in the movie Date Night, and we worked together at SNL. She was the head writer when I was there. Maya, Maya Rudolph, we worked together at SNL also. Tim Meadows, my first time working with Tim Meadows, although we're friends, uh, we got Terry Crews. He's also a guest star on this, on this show. So we got a chance to, um, of course, work with some people I've never worked with before, which is great. Because I, I like the folks who I have worked with, but also enjoy creating a starting point for people I've never worked with before. So now we got some place to go from there. So it, it was great. But majority of the folks I've worked with before, Fred Armisen and uh, uh, almost, almost everyone on the show I've worked with before and everyone who is new, the great part about that is we have a, a great starting point. So we can say we work together on Maple Worth Murders. John, how did you come up with the idea of Maple Worth Murders? Well, I was trying to come up with ideas for myself 
to be in a show and I had huge writer's block. And my wife, Sue said, why don't you think of something for Paula because she's the funniest person we know. And I went away and five minutes later came up with this idea that she would play a murder mystery um, novella writer, um, much like Murder, She Wrote. And then uh, pitched it to Paula and she immediately said yes, because it just fell into place of, she's just, she is this character. It's not a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> Abigail might wear a little bit more uh, controlling undergarments because I don't wear girdles, but I'm kind of Abigail with lo a little bit longer hair. Love it. And Paula, could you please tell us what Mapleworth Murders is about? Mapleworth Murders is a sort of nostalgic uh, in its style, um, timeless small town crime procedural uh, that is an homage to things like Murder, She Wrote and other BBC mystery murder shows. And it involves this town that like everyone knows each other. Uh, way too many people get murdered in very strange murders uh, in strange settings. And it just becomes a, a commonplace, but yet they only have two cops who are very bad at what they do. And so Abigail knows murder because she's a murder mystery novellaist. She's never written a full book, but she, you know, she knows that she has to use her skills to try to solve these. And she takes it upon herself all the time with no boundaries whatsoever, crossing all police lines. That's your Love elevator it. pitch, right? That's my spiel. <laughs> <laughs> and John, you know, um, can you please describe your character, this bumbling cop? I love playing a character who is very um, clueless and also clumsy. Also, once again, not too far away from myself. Uh, <laughs> he just has a mustache. Um, but we just always thought that Gilbert playing off of Paula, this, this low status, clumsy goof with Paula's high status, um, murder mystery solving kind of thing would be a fun thing to play with. And it, it was just very close to our own relationship, really. And then we added the crush in there, the sort of dead end crush he always has for me as, as a fun thing to play throughout. John, how did you come up with the idea of Mapleworth Murders? Well, I was trying to come up with ideas for myself to be in a show and I had huge writer's block. And my wife, Sue, said, why don't you think of something for Paula because she's the funniest person we know. And I went away and five minutes later came up with this idea that she would play a murder mystery um, novella writer, um, much like Murder, She Wrote. And then uh, pitched it to Paula and she immediately said yes because it just fell into place. Of She's just, she is this character. It's not a stretch. <laughs> Abigail might wear a little bit more uh, controlling undergarments because I don't wear girdles, but I'm kind of Abigail with lo a little bit longer hair. And John, you know, um, can you please describe your character, this bumbling cop? Uh, I love playing a character who is very um, clueless and also clumsy. And also, once again, not too far away from myself. Uh, <laughs> he just has a mustache. Um, but we just always thought that Gilbert playing off of Paula, this, this low status, clumsy goof with Paula's high status um, murder mystery solving kind of thing would be a fun thing to play with. And it, it was just very close to our own relationship, really. And then we added the crush in there, the sort of dead end crush he always has for me as, as a fun thing to play throughout. The crush is amazing. It's hilarious. And there are some amazing guest stars in the show, including Maya Rudolph and Fred Armisen, Jack McBriar, and the list goes on. How were you able to bring on these amazing guests onto the project? Well, luckily we, we've worked with most of those people uh, and have known them for years. One of the main core things was we just wanted to do stuff with our friends and have it be fun people doing funny stuff together. 
And we just wrote the parts for these people. And then they said, yes. John, how did you come up with the idea of Mapleworth Murders? Well, I was trying to come up with ideas for myself to be in a show and I had huge writer's block. And my wife, Sue said, why don't you think of something for Paula because she's the funniest person we know. And I went away and five minutes later came up with this idea that she would play a murder mystery um, novella writer, um, much like Murder, She Wrote. And then uh, pitched it to Paula and she immediately said yes, because it just fell into place of, she's just, she is this character. It's not a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> Abigail might wear a little bit more uh, controlling undergarments because I don't wear girdles, but I'm kind of Abigail with lo a little bit longer hair. Love it. And Paula, could you please tell us what Mapleworth Murders is about? Mapleworth Murders is a sort of nostalgic uh, in its style, um, timeless small town crime procedural uh, that is an homage to things like Murder, She Wrote and other BBC mystery murder shows. And it involves this town that like everyone knows each other. Uh, way too many people get murdered in very strange murders uh, in strange settings. And it just becomes a, a commonplace, but yet they only have two cops who are very bad at what they do. And so Abigail knows murder because she's a murder mystery novellaist. She's never written a full book, but she, you know, she knows that she has to use her skills to try to solve these. And she takes it upon herself all the time with no boundaries whatsoever, crossing all police lines. That's your Love elevator it. pitch, right? That's my spiel. <laughs> <laughs> and John, you know, um, can you please describe your character, this bumbling cop? I love playing a character who is very um, clueless and also clumsy. Also, once again, not too far away from myself. Uh, <laughs> he just has a mustache. Um, but we just always thought that Gilbert playing off of Paula, this, this low status, clumsy goof with Paula's high status, um, murder mystery solving kind of thing would be a fun thing to play with. And it, it was just very close to our own relationship, really. And then we added the crush in there, the sort of dead end crush he always has for me as, as a fun thing to play throughout. The crush is amazing. It's hilarious. <laughs> and there are some amazing guest stars in the show, including Maya Rudolph and Fred Armisen, Jack McBriar, and the list goes on. How were you able to bring on these amazing guests onto the project? Well, luckily, we, we've worked with most of those people uh, and have known them for years. One of the main core things was we just wanted to do stuff with our friends and have it be fun people doing funny stuff together. And we just wrote the parts for these people and then they said yes. <laughs>